Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, I picked up a Moog Muse uh, a few weeks ago. Essentially, like many of you, I saw the, the videos on day one. There were a lot of them and was immediately like, oh my gosh, this thing sounds amazing. Uh, so I bought this. It was not sent to me. Uh, I sold a bunch of stuff. I was living on a diet of uh, reverb lowball sandwiches there for a while. It was a real, real bloodbath over on the reverb page. But as a result of selling many things, was able to buy this uh, free and clear and have enjoyed every second of my time with it thus far. And so today, this is not like an overview video or a demo or a review or anything like that. I just wanted to share my first three patches because as I've played with this synthesizer over the last few weeks, um, Every now and then I've landed on a patch or a methodology or a sound that I just really like by exploring the feature set and I've saved three of them. I've lost a few interesting ones because I forgot to save them. Um, but I thought you might, you know, enjoy some unfiltered and um, unsponsored thoughts on the synthesizer if you are in the market for one and to just listen to it. Um, so let's jump right in. This first sound is titled Chiasmos Pad. I hope that you guys are fans of Chiasmos, uh, which is Olafur Arnold's electronic project. If you're not, stop watching this and go listen to their music. It's really good. Um, but this is a very basic two oscillator pad. It's just a single timbre. We're not even using the bitambral capabilities of the Muse. And for the most part, I have found myself not using it by timbrely because when you use both timbres, of course, every press of the key uses two voices. But let me just play this for a second. So we've got the second oscillator tuned up a fifth, uh, which creates that big, rich sound. We've got some kind of drifty pitch modulation happening over here with the pitch LFO, which we can turn up or down. It's really nice. Making heavy use of the overload slider here on the mixer. So here's it without. So it sounds great, but when we turn this up to about half, that nice meaty overdrive comes in. And the other thing happening here that's super special and nice is the pan spread is being utilized. Let me turn this all the way off. Again, really pretty. Everything's in the middle of the stereo field when we turn that up. You just get this gorgeous stereo image. Very, very nice. Um, I saved the patch here because it's a great starting place. And from here, um, jumping in and modulating things with the uh, mod mapping functionalities is super fun, kind of affecting the pan spread, um, playing with the pitch LFO, and uh, maybe modulating the wave shape would be fun. There's all kinds of things you can do from there, but that's Chiasmos Pad. We will move on to Righteous Arps. <laughs> if you're not using puns when you name your patches, what are you even doing? Um, why are you? Why are you not? Um, okay, so this is kind of a Steve Reich thing. I'm going to turn on hold. We are using both timbres for this sound. The intention is to have a hold on both layers and also the arpe arpeggiator on. Um, but let me just play a few notes and then we'll talk about it. So again, tuned up a fifth on one of the oscillators, and I think I'm like tuned down to a fourth on one of the timbers. I can't really remember, and there's no fast way to check that. From here, we'll change the octave range. Very fun. 
we can go in and tell the arpeggiator, hey, I want you to do a leapfrog thing forward where we're going every two, mo two notes forward and one note backwards. And that'll affect the art pattern. But the really special uh, fun happens on this patch. We do a couple of things. Number one, start playing with the pan spread for either voice. Listen to how it affects the perceived rhythm in your left and right ear. So turn it up. This is a really fun performance gesture. And it's very much intended to be used with the delay, which I will now turn on. Synthesizers, you can um, tell the system to handle parameter changes on saved patches in one of two ways. Number one, it just snaps immediately to whatever value you turn the knob to. Um, but number two is a feature, I think uh, sequential instruments call this pickup, where basically the knob has got to cross the point that it's set to already before any changes happen. What that does is it prevents jumps. Um, if you know how to do that on the Muse, please drop that uh, set of instructions into the comments. And if the Muse doesn't do that, hey Moog, uh, it should. We can detune the voices a little bit here. There's a slight attack here. Right, and if we turn that off, it gets really plucky. But that seems less, less Steve Reiki to me. And I kind of like this sound. Music for eight oscillators. myself I was zoning out there because that patch is so fun to just tweak ever so slowly and again I tend to save patches not in their final state but in a place where I feel like when you begin to deviate from that saved position it's a really interesting um, performance moment so save them when you're about 75% of the way done and then you've got options for dialing in the sound as you perform or record or just play and have fun. All right, third and last preset we'll go over today uh, is called Flutterbys. And this one makes use of the extremely interesting custom LFO wave shapes over here on LFO 1 and 2. If we jump into the More menu, you can see that we've got this user wave uh, option and there are a ton of interesting and non-standard wave shapes that are detailed in the manual. And we're using the wobble wave shape here. Um, I'm gonna turn off the delay, turn on the hold. This will be a plucky sound first. It's 
so what is happening here is that uh, LFO1 is assigned to modulate our VCA pan amount, which is over here in the modulation oscillator. Um, and so that weird funky LFO shape is throwing the voices around in the stereo field, even without the pan spread knob being engaged. So everything starts in the middle, but is being whipped around by the LFO. And the rate of that LFO, LFO1 is being modulated by LFO2. This is what I love about the Muse, is it's so fa it's faster than patch cables to, to map modulations. And once you get used to it, it does feel like that same mental um, process as you get in modular where you're just exploring and you're like, ooh, I wonder what happens if I connect this to here and set up a rule for how that modulation happens. It can be kind of overwhelming at first, but after you get your sea legs on this deal, it, it starts to feel like second nature. Um, and a lot of the processes that I learned in Eurorack are much easier to use here in a lot of ways, like faster and more musical too. I may regret saying that on the internet. Onward. Okay, but that's what that sounds like in a plucked environment. I almost like this patch better when we set it up like a pad. Thusly, because listen to what happens when we sustain notes. Kind of has a mind of its own. When we actually do turn up the pan spread and get some of that dispersion delay going on. timbre here. It's really tempting, I think, from a functionality standpoint to go, oh, but I still have a whole other timbre I could use. True, but you don't have to. My rule with highly functional instruments, instruments that can do almost anything, and for which the sky is the limit, is to quit while I'm ahead. When you find a sound that you like, or find a sound that I like, just let it be good. It's okay. Just because the doodad can do all of the things and can go further doesn't mean that it has to. What matters is whether or not you like what you're hearing with your ears. Probably too much detune there. <laughs> anyway, so, that patch, a lot of the like randomness that I like with uh, malfunctioning tape is happening here at the VCA level, but not at the pitch level. So we could explore that more by routing that um, LFO to uh, the pitch of the oscillators. And if we wanted to do that, it'd be very simple. We would just go mod map, um, da, 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 da. we've got an empty slot here. So we hit select and we say, hey, I want LFO1 to be the source, got it. Where do we want it to go? Click destination and let's do the pitch LFO and lock that in and say 100%. Now this should be interesting because the pitch LFO's depth is kind of restricted because of its function. Let's see what happens. A lot. So, select that again take it down to like 20 25 28 no, no.
time. Anyway, I uh, hope you like these sounds. Uh, I'll be back, I'm sure, in time with, with more patches and, and presets. Um, not so much to share the soup recipe, because I want you to make your own, but to kind of help, one, show you what the synthesizer sounds like, and, and two, to just talk about methodology and philosophy so that when you go in and, and cook up your own sounds, um, you're kind of doing so with a lot of intention. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe, ding the bell, do all that YouTube stuff if you want to see more. If you don't want to ever see anything um, from me or this channel ever again, fair enough. Thanks for coming by, and uh, we'll see you in the real world.